So I want to teach you how to make a poncho with a turtleneck for anybody. So the way we're going to do that is just by taking a measuring tape and placing it on the forehead and measuring the head size. Now her head size is 22. So we're gonna use that measurement of 22 in order to create the foundation chain for the poncho and everything else from there is just simple. So whatever head size you want to use, just go ahead and do that, take that measurement. But we also need another measurement. Can you stand up please? Yes. So the, our next measurement is going to be from where the collarbone is, so from the collarbone to the length that the person wants. Now, I already know from her, she's looking at a, a length of 25. We may go longer than that, but you want to take that measurement as well to see how long you want the poncho. So with the head circumference and the length and place, you should be able to make a poncho for anyone. So let's get to the table. Okay, so now that we have our measurements, you want to carry your measuring tape to the table. So we, for this one, you need 22 inches for the size of her head. And whatever size you're making, you're going to measure your head. And whatever inches that is, we're going to chain up in that amount. So put this here and take that there so you see if you can see that good we go past 22 inches we go almost to 23 because we have to go in multiples of eight so if your mark is 22 just like mine is but at 22 say you're only you're not at a multiple of eight then just keep going to finish off that count of a multiple of eight. So for instance, right here, I have 72. So when I got to 22, I was at just a uh, 60, 68. So I kept going to 72 in order to complete a multiple of eight. So you got that? All right, good. So I'm starting with my count of 72 in accordance with my 22 inches um, making sure that I have kept in uh, eight count and once I have my chain I want to make sure there are no spins and turns here and I want to connect it so how we're going to connect it is you're going to go into that first stitch And you're just going to make a slip stitch so slip into that one and slip right into that one. okay so from here we're just going to chain up three one two and three so that's count is our first double crochet so that counts for this first hole that we slipped into so we're going to go in the next hole and we're going to make another double crochet. And we're going to carry out that double crochet all the way across. Now, counting is important in the beginning. So if you started out with 72 or whatever your number took you to in multiples of eight, then you want to continue on and, and have 72 at the end of your row or whatever your starting foundation chain number is, you want to make double crochets all the way across this first row, but you want to make sure that you stay with the same number. So you don't have to count as you're going along, but when you get to the end of this chain, I want you to make sure you count all of your stitches and make sure you have the whatever number was your starting foundation chain. In my case, mine should be 72. And um, I'm gonna talk to you as we go along this first row. This is a very, very easy um, pattern to 
and it goes it's universal it goes for anyone so if i'm making a child size any one size as long as i had the head circumference then i don't have to worry about anything else making my foundation chain and multiples of eight will keep to the pattern no matter what the size is so i am making this for young adult teen but if you want to make this for a size 3x all the way down to a six month you use the same uh, method just measure uh, the head and go on down so i'm going to finish this up and i will meet you back as soon as i come back around and make sure you count your stitches Okay, everyone I am back around to my beginning portion I have counted all my stitches I still have 72 all the way around and we're going to go into the first the chain three that we first did we're going to go into to the top of that one in that first hole right here and make a slip stitch okay now for round two We are going to chain up one, two, and three. Now that is going to count for this stitch right here that we just slip stitched into. And we're going to go into our next stitch and make a double crochet. Okay, we are now going to go into the next stitch and make a double crochet. We are now going to chain one. That chain one holds the place for this next stitch down here. So we go to the next stitch and make another double crochet. And we will work in this way all way around. One, two, and three double crochets chain one skip in this stitch we will go into this stitch one get us some yarn here and the next one two and the next one three chain one skip this space into the next space we'll go back in again and so we're making three double crochets and three stitches across we are chaining one skipping this stitch and going back to repeat our pattern so one, two, and three. Chain one, skip that stitch in the next stitch. One, Two and three. Chain one. I'm skipping this space. We're going into the next space. One, two, and three. Chain one, skip that space into the next space. One, and the next space. Two, and the next space. Three, chain one, skip the space down here into the next space. We're going to go in and make another double crochet. And we're going to keep doing this all the way across. 
Okay, so. And this is what it's looking like. So you double crochet, double crochet, double crochet, chain one, skip that space. Double crochet, double crochet, double crochet, chain one, skip that space. So do that all the way around and I'll meet you back as soon as you complete that. Okay, so I've come back around. Uh, one, two, three doubles. Make my chain, uh, chain one. We have one space that we ought to skip. And we're going to go slip stitch right into the chain three that we started out with. We're going to slip stitch into the top of there. Okay. We're going to chain up one. Now we're going to begin making our points. Uh, this is the foundation right here. And we will be later coming back and building our neck around this portion right here. But now we will create the body of our poncho. So we are going to go right back into this hole and make a double crochet. Okay. Then we're going to go back in the hole again and make another double crochet. And one more time, make another do double crochet. Now, I will, from here on out, be referring to these as clusters. We will be putting one cluster into each one of these open spaces, except for the points. This is going to be one point, and if we match that up, which it should match up nicely, this one on the opposite end will be our next point. So, we'll have, I believe it's nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then uh, into this one, we will make a point, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, perfectly. So we should have equal parts on each side. So no matter what size that you have um, done, start on your foundation chain, you might have a different amount to get to before you hit your points, but your points should be at equal, uh, it should be equal on each side, and your points should be in the dead center. Okay. And that goes for any size. So this is the beginning of our first point. We will start with the beginning of our first point. When we go all the way around, we will be completing this point. So from here, once we have our cluster of three, we will always chain one and we will go into our next large hole and we will do another cluster of three. And that is three double crochets. Three. And then we will chain one. We go into our next one and make another cluster of three. And then we will chain one. Another cluster of three. Chain one, another cluster of three. Let me chain one. Let me get this count. I don't want my point to get away from me. Into the next one, another cluster of three. and three and then chain one another cluster of three and chain one one two three four five six Another cluster of three. Chain 
chain one, crochet three, chain one. Uh, let me check. I don't want to jump over my point. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So this is our next corner. Once you get past these three rows counting, you don't no longer have to do. But um, make sure these three rows are very accurate. So this is my next point. So on the on the points, we will make a cluster of three. One two, and three, and we will always chain two. Go into the next, go into the same hole and make another cluster of three. So all of that into one space is going to create our point. So as you see, that's what it is. Cluster of three, chain two, and cluster of three. And you will do that in each and every point when you come to it. And when you come out of it, still chain one and go right back into your rhythm of making clusters of threes. Chain one. Cluster of three. And chain one. Cluster of three. And chain one. Cluster of three. And of course, you're going to do all of this until we come back to our half, our point, which we have halfway completed. And we're going to finish it off. So you always should be uh, starting in a point and finishing in a point on every round that you do. Like I said, after this, it is really pretty much no thought involved. You're doing this, and your points are very easy to notice. So the counting after this portion is completely and utterly finished. Um, it grows on its own. This is the one before it. Chain one. So now we're back at our uh, our point, our beginning point. So we're going to go right into this hole and we are going to make another cluster of three. And then we're going to chain two. And we're going to slip stitch into the top of the first stitch to chain three. Oops. Okay. Then we're just going to chain one up and we're going to go right back into this same hole right back into the same hole so double back and make another double crochet double back and make another double crochet and one more and that is how we are going to begin all of our rows okay and chain one 
and you're just going to keep going all the way out with this from here it's it's just putting a cluster into every space that you have one cluster into every space until you get to the point and in the points you're going to put the two clusters and that is simply it now if you are or wanted to change colors if you're not working in a solid color i will be working this entire piece in this heather gray if you are working a different uh you want to change and do different colors then you can do that at any point in which you would like For me, I'll be working all of my uh, my whole piece in this one color. And it will grow all on its own again. So once you uh, get the length that you desire, you pretty much just stop. So our measurements for her length, I do believe we're 25. We're going to get to 25. Uh, and we'll see how we like that. I do believe we're going to go down to, uh, to 25 at least. And we might possibly do it a little bit longer. But she wants to see where it's at there. But from here, it's going to be your desired length. So you're going to take and measure. Just as I showed you in the beginning of the video. To whatever point that you would like. And you will just go down from there. What, right here is another corner. So as I said, when you get to your corners, very, very noticeable. Very, very noticeable. So when you get to your corner, you want to do the same thing. You want to make your cluster of three. You want to chain two. And then you want to make your cluster of three again. Now remember when you are measuring... Make sure you always chain one when you come out and continue to make your clusters of three and chain one at the end. Now, when you are measuring your piece for length, you must remember, I count my measuring from this starting point. I don't start measuring until my points. So I measure from this point down. So if I wanted uh, 25 inches, I'm, my, me my starting point for my measurement would be here. So I'm going to start my measuring tape here and go down because I do not measure the first two rows. That is why when I took my measurements early, I did not start at the top of her neck. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Just making this all the way through i'm going to come all the way around to the end point so i can show you all again how to end and begin again on your next row so it's all clear then i'm going to leave you to do your busy work and i'm going to go find my little comfy corner and i'm going to work this up as well So again, depending on what size you are making, you might not have but so uh, long to go around before you get to your point. But I absolutely love this piece and with the turtleneck, it comes out really, really nice not a tight turtleneck i don't like tight turtlenecks and you can make it as loose as you want to um, i will just make it the traditional way just to show you and i will show you how to make it a little bit looser if you want it a little bit looser 
All right, we are the one before our point. Okay, so here we go. Going back into this one. And we're going to make our double crochet for the last point. Two. And three. Now we're going to chain two. And remember, we're going to slip stitch right back into the top of our starting chain. Well, our starting double because we started with a double. And we're going to chain one. And then we're going right back into the hole to make a double. And we're going to make another double. And we're going to make another double. Chain one. And you're just going to keep going around like that. Like I said, your points at this point are, are very, very noticeable. So when you get to your points, you know exactly what to do. Cluster, chain two, cluster. Everything else is cluster and chain one. And you just sit back. It's nice and relaxing uh, piece to work on. You cannot miss your holes. They are right there for you. The first uh, two rows helped you to build your foundation as long as you have your foundation number correct and your spacing correct here everything else is going to flow and you just want to make this as wide as you as long as you want it and let me demonstrate what i mean when you are going to measure you're going to start you see the point start here measure right here where your points are and that will give you your length okay so i am going to go all the way down to uh 25 then i'm going to try this on my model and see if she likes the 25 because she's not sure exactly what size she wants um so i will bring my finished piece back and we'll move on to step two okay so i have now completed my piece you see it is extra extra big extra extra um i have let's see go to the point remember i said you measure from point so unstretched i have 27 inches unstretched now because this is yarn it will stretch over time so it'll be a little bit looser than this but from point to point, unstretched, I have 27 inches. And she was pleased with that. So our total here is 27 inches. So once we have completed this, and, and for different sizes. So um, different sizes, of course, you'll have different measurements. And then the, the, at this point, it's all about what you like. Some people might want their puncher shorter. Some people might want it longer. So, it's all about preference, um, what, what it is that you want. The next task to do will be to lay it out just like you see now and match up your points. Your starting point, everything should be a mirror image. What you have on the front should be in the back. So, match up your points and make it, uh, make sure they all match in order to create the sleeve. So I'm going to move this over some so I can get a better angle on one point. So I have went all the way up my line and matched up my points. I came out, um, I finished with an uneven row. So I have, uh, um, my last row is uneven. uneven. So what I've done is for my sleeves, I have nine pieces for my sleeves. So I took nine clusters, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I took yarn, it does not match, so it's easy to see. And I put that in between those points so that I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 
So again, if you're doing a different size, a, a, a smaller size, you would be different. Uh, say for like um, a, a six month old, I might only do five of these. A little bit older, I might do more. So it's all about what size and arm length uh, you want. So once you, especially once you put it on the person that you're making it for, you'll see, you'll be able to cuff it up kind of and see how much space you need for your armhole. You don't need much because your arm is still going to rest. It's, it's, it's only a small cuff of a sleeve and it's still going to rest around this area. So it just has to be big enough to fit this area. You can always, um, which I don't, I never feel the need to do because you can, I, I feel like you, I can gauge it, but you can always measure there and then make sure your measurements is the same care. Uh, it's always better just to try it on and see. So I'm using nine clusters in order to make my piece, my sleeve for my piece. And I've done the same on this side as well, marked off my nine clusters. And the reason why we want to mark it off, because as we work, we don't want to lose where we are working from. So I'm going to do one armhole with you to show you exactly how we are going to work that. Let's get our yarn. So we're going to add on our yarn. I'm going to be working from the back to the front. So slide this down a little bit. Onto our first cluster that we're using. In the first double crochet in that cluster, we want to add our yarn. And then we want to chain up two. Well, we want to have a chain of three. Um, and then we're going to go in the next one. And we're going to make a double. And the next one, a double. Now this chain, and I'm working over this end while I'm going. So right here, the space, the chain one space, we're going to put a double there too. Okay. And then into this cl next cluster of three, we want to put one double on top of each double from that cluster of three. Okay. And then in the chain one space, we're going to place a double. And into the next cluster of three, we want to put, again, a double on top of each double from that. So that will total three double crochets. And into this chain one space, again, a double. The next one want to put a double and we're going to just keep doing that all the way around so double on top of the double from the previous cluster and double into the chain one space
Now we come to our last cluster of three. You want to put a double on top of each double crochet space. And we come to our next point. So with the next point, we come to uh, our next tied off point. So now we have to connect these two to make an armhole. So slide your little pieces out the way. And you're going to create one last double. You're going to go into this space right here. And you're going to go in the space where you started. Okay, right before where you started. And you're going to connect them with a double crochet. Okay, I'm going to take that out and I'm going to do it one more time. So you're going to yarn over, you're going into this chain one space. And you're going to put on, slide on your hook this chain one space. Okay, connect them with a double crochet. Spin this around. And now you see that they are connected. So into that first chain three, you're going to slip stitch into there. Chain one. So now we are going to be making front and back posts to create the sleeve. So I want you to go behind, behind this one and push it forward and make a double crochet behind it, right? And that pushes this one forward. So now we want to push the next one back. So we're going to go in front of this double crochet here. And work a double crochet in front of that. And now we want to go push this one forward by working behind it. And make a double crochet. Yarn over. We want to push this one back. So we want to go in front of that double crochet. And make double crochet in front of it and we're going to keep alternating that pushing this one forward by making a double crochet behind it and pushing this one back by making a double crochet in front of it and it's going to give us this nice ribbed effect Again, we're going to go in back of this one so we can make our double crochet in back of it. And we want to go in front of this one, grabbing our yarn, pulling it in front. Oh, wait, lost my yarn. Going in front of that one, grab our yarn and pull it out. So we can make, push it back. This one we're going to push forward by making one in back of it. And this one we're going to push back by making the double crochet in front of it. Okay. And you just want to do that alternating all the way around.
Now we've come back around to our starting point. So our next last one is going to get pushed back. And we are going to slip stitch right into the top where we began our chain one. So now we're going to chain one again and we're just going to go all the way around where we have front post. We're going to continue that where we have them push back. We're going to continue that. So you're going to just go all the way around one more last time and where you push them back make that post you're going to continue that and where you push them forward and make front post you're going to continue back Now we are coming around to our end. Making our last one. Slip stitch into that chain one that you placed there earlier. We want to cut our work at a, a good length for us to weave in our ends with. And you just want to pull that through and pull it all the way out and pull tight and you have your first sleeve little cup sleeve you give it a little sneak so I decided to go around three uh, times you can go around more if you want to my daughter she's dainty so she doesn't want you, uh, too much of anything so I gave her three you can do this more times than I have here. Okay, so now come back and work that same uh, that same sleeve on this side, and then we'll come back and we'll 
start our neck. Okay, so now we have both of our arms on. Oh, our little cuff sleeves, and they're so cute. So again, whatever size you're doing, you're going to be doing that to fit your size. I'm going to bring this up a little bit so we can get to our neck, okay? Now, where do we want to begin? I want to begin where I joint, okay? Just because I want to keep all my joints in what I would consider the back. And if you are changing colors, then all of your color changes are in one area. So I would consider that your back and start work from there. So you don't have all of your um, joints in the front. So this is our neck. So what we want to do is whatever chain um, foundation chain you started with, whatever your number was in multiples of eight, you want to now re uh go back in join and you want to keep that same count out so mine was 72 so i want to chain a three once i get my yarn on chain up three and I want to keep that same number count going out. So, in, in doubles. So I'm gonna make doubles all the way along this side, around this hole. And uh, my end count should be 72. So whatever your foundation chain starting was, it should be the same when you finish. And you're going to be doing double crochets all the way around. Now, if you're doing, if you're using this video to do a smaller size, and I'm talking about like Tyler, uh, little, little kid sizes. One, I do have a video for Tyler and little kid sizes. But if you're using this video to, to make those sizes, this neck is a for them is half, um, is a half of a double. So for the smaller, smaller kid sizes, instead of doing double crochets all the way around, I do half doubles up all the way around. And I do have a video up for my younger sizes. But we're gonna do double crochets all the way around. And we're actually going to do three rows of double crochets. So this is our first row and then we will be doing two more rows. And this right here is just building up our neck. All we're doing now is just building up our neck. And, and when you are going back into this stitch, um, you're just grabbing that loop it's okay if you want to do two loops on the bottom end of this when you do your foundation chain and you just have one loop now to work in or as some people um just go on one loop on their foundation chain then then you would have two loops here that you will be going in but the way i do my foundation chain i go in two loops so i have one to work in here that's fine make sure you don't miss um, any stitches going all the way around. And I, I love the turtleneck look on the poncho. Definitely a fall winter poncho. So warm. Chain, go all the way around. I am at my point. I'm halfway there. So 
But then when you finish making your ponchos, spam me with uh, pictures. I would love to see how this project works out for you. I've made so many of these in so many different sizes. Usually I like to do color, color, color. But my daughter was like, no, I want simple and I want plain. Skinny all gray. I tried to convince her to get a different color. <laughs> She's like, no, I just want it all gray. I would love to see yours, especially if you're changing colors and stuff. Let's see what you, how, how this works up for you. So again, like I said, we're doing three rows of double crochets just to build up our neck. When you come to the end, you're just going to slip stitch into that top of that chain three that we started out with. And you're just going to keep going around again, slip stitching into the top of your chain three, all the way till you get to your third row. So I will meet you back here once you get your rows all complete, and we'll move on to the next step of it all. Okay, so I have done my three rows and I am back at the top. So I'm gonna slip stitch in the top of the third chain three that we begin with that row with, and that is it. Now, this is three rows here. We're going to measure it to see if that helps anyone. So our three rows come to two inches, okay? Now, if you would like to um, make your turtleneck longer, you would just cut more rows right here, okay? Because this is going to stop our length of our turtleneck. So once you have the desired amount, you're going to chain one into the same hole you're going to go back in oh wait i'm not there into the same hole go back in and make one single crochet and then you're going to place one single crochet along this entire row now what this single crochet does it's going to create a natural fold for our turtleneck so if you want your turtleneck to be higher than the two inches that um, I have just gained by making three rows of doubles, then you would just make more rows of double crochets before you do this. Because once you make this row of single crochets, it's going to, like I said, create a natural fold. And this is where our turtleneck will bend at. It's one of those, uh, it's just personal preference. I know the person I'm making it for, uh, this is the way she wants it. So if you want to do something different, right ahead and it will be just fine if it has more than two inches right here. think you'll like the way that this one turns out just like this so just keep working your single crochets all along nice quick and easy row and we will be creating the, the rest of our neck just as we have done on our sleeve with the front and the back posts that is how we're going to create our uh, the rest of our turtleneck.
point we are coming up to our starting point now we are going to slip stitch right into the first single crochet and then we're going to chain up three mm -hmm. now this places this chain three hold this first space so we'll go into the next stitch and we're going to do yet again another row of double crochet so go all the way around your piece with double crochet Okay, so we've made it back around to the beginning. We're going to slip stitch into the top of that chain three. Chain up one. Now we're going to start doing our front and back, back pulls, just like we did on our sleeve. So we're going to push this one forward and make a double crochet in the back of it. And we're going to work in front of that one. And we're going to make a front a uh, uh, front poke in front of it and we're going to go behind this one and we're going to go in front of this one so just like we did on our sleeve so if you got past the sleeves then you already know what we're doing front and back poke we're pushing one forward and we're pushing that one in the back we're push, pulling this one forward, working behind it, a double crochet, and we're pushing this one back by working a double crochet in front of it. Now this right here, you're going to do this for five rows and then you will be done. So continue making front and back posts alternating. And on the next row, you will, um, it will already be established, front or back post, and you just want to continue doing that. So if you want a front post, you want to make another one, and back post, you want to make another one. So you want to establish your front and back post on this row. On our next row, we will just be keeping with that pattern. So we want to do this for five rows. So this would be row one of that pattern. And you're going to do four more rows. So I am going to work this. And then we will come back and see exactly what it looks like. Okay? So this is how it's going to go. front and back post. So work up, you finish up your five rows and we'll come back and after that we'll be throwing tassels on this one. So I'll see you back in a few. Okay, so I have finished my five rows front and back post end it off. Now take your piece and fold down and you will see right where you have placed that row of single crochets it will become a natural fold. Let's turn it around and that is it. That is our neck and I think it's going to look lovely 
if you want to go down more roads with this you can do that as well so it's all about taste you can make it come down so it's draped i like it right there and we'll see how it looks on our little model so we have our our top we have our arms the last 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 thing to do would be to make our tassels because we're going to be putting tassels all around the bottom here so you want a hook larger than what you're using we're using a five millimeter so we want a hook a little bit larger than that and i'm just going to be making taking a book because i i, I it's just what i do i use random things that i have so I don't know if I want my um, tassels to be this long, but I'll probably trim them afterwards if not. So I'm just gonna take and I'm going to wrap around. I, have, I need a lot of tassels. So I'm just gonna keep wrapping this around here. Just keep wrapping it around. If I need more tassels, I'll come back later and put um, and, and, and make more no set amount i just know i need a lot i think i'm gonna use three pieces to work tassels so i want to make sure i get quite a few of them to get me started so i'm just going to wrap 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 around and i'm going to show you how to place the tassels and we're going to weave in our ends which in my case, I don't have many ends, but we're gonna weave in our ends and then we're going to go cut my yarn down here. And then I'm gonna go in here and I'm just gonna cut my yarn. And I have a bunch of tassels, just like that. <clears throat> So I'm going to be using three tassels. And I just want to show you how to place them. And you can put yours in wherever you would like. I'm going to go through whatever hole I want to place, where I want to place my tassel. Pull them through. Make a loop and pull down just like that tasselage and what I think I'm going to go in every two and I'm going to place my tassels in every two all the way down the line so actually I'm, I'm yeah I'm doing every other so go through the hole Get your tassels, fold them in half, put them on the hook to pull through, go inside the hole, grab the rest of the tassels, and just pull down tight. And that is it. That's how you place your tassels. So if you're putting tassels on, make them whatever length you would like to. And Go ahead, place them on wherever you would like. And I'm going to do this. Don't forget to weave in all of your ends. And we're going to go find a model. All right. All right, so here is the finished product. I absolutely love it. And you can turn around. Let me see the back. We thought we were going to cut the tassels down some, but we wound up leaving them. Um, we have not made mention of them, so I think we like them. <laughs> so turn around again. And as you see with the neck, like I told you, I think the neck is perfect. If I showed you how to go up more, if you want the neck up more, um, I showed you how to go up more if you want the neck up more or if you want yours tighter. Um, she likes the loose neck. So that rocked for her. And that is it. Another piece done. All right, guys. Thank you for coming to the corner.